Sangeeta, thank you uh, for joining me today on Pop Culture Unplugged. Thanks for having me, Elias. I'm looking forward to it. Exciting I like a good time. conversation. There we go. Exciting <laughs> times too. You know, yeah, you've been, uh, you know, I was doing research on you. You've been busy all over the place with hosting shows and fitness and health. And I mean, you've done a little bit of everything, let's just say. It's a lot. It's a lot, uh, but I'm, I'm getting through it. Yeah. So your career, it's been amazing so far. You know, I've noticed you went from ele electrical engineering to hosting the shows like ET Canada, Home to Win, Love and Translation on TLC. I got to know, what, what you went from like <laughs> this side of the world into entertainment. How does that even happen? I How know. does that even happen? That's <laughs> I, I need to know. Happen. How does that even happen? Well, it was the funniest story. When I did apply for a university, I did apply for uh, engineering and journalism. And it was one of those conversations I had with my dad. And he's like, well, where are you going to make a living? Where are you going to be okay on your own? And I'm like, engineering. He's like, yeah, you love math and science. Get into the engineering world. See how that's going to go for you. And it was the right decision. I It made me think in a 3D world. When you, when you become an engineer, sure, you learn all the math and sciences and how to do things. But it really teaches you how to think about life mm. and the way you approach life. And with that, in the background, I was working at nighttime, uh, volunteering on a television show. So I had two different lives and I was doing a show called Toronto Living. And it was the moment I met Brad Pitt on a red carpet that changed everything for me. I was pregnant at the time and he, uh, I yell out, I'm, uh, I'm cold and I'm pregnant. And he walks over and holds my hand and I'm like, oh my God, Brad Pitt's holding my hand. <laughs> and I'm like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, and that kind of changed everything. And I went with the flow and I did weather. Uh, and that's where kind of led my life into television. Mm. You mentioned your parents told you, yo, you should be going to school, like you said, for electric, like engineering, you know, backup plan, everything. When you told them, right, I'm going the other way around. What was their reaction? What, what did they say to you? They said, yeah, go for it. It okay. was, they knew I had this foundation. If anything were to not work out for me, I would be able to go back to engineering and be okay. My dad always told us to be independent. He had three daughters mm. and one son and has. Uh, and he just wanted to us be successful on our own. And I'm glad he said that to me when I originally went to him. Was the goal always like, you know, like hosting a show or being behind the scenes? What was like the, at first when you first started jumping into this? Oh, dude, I, I was just excited to be on television. I was yeah. in a pageant and I was a, a spokesperson for them. Uh, I didn't win. I, I think I was third runner up or something like that. Uh, but that experience kind of taught me this. I really did like it. I love what was happening. And it just kept going. I think the passion was there and I'm like, how is this going to happen? So anything that came towards me, an opportunity, I just lived it. So the idea that I was able to end up hosting an entertainment show, a national entertainment show in Canada is, I still don't believe that actually happened. And all the experiences I've had in the last 10 years, it blows my mind. So I think because I didn't go into this career, it wasn't a perspective that I had. It wasn't something I was manifesting. It was me trying to enjoy the ride. So now while you're still going on this ride, uh, what's the goal? Do you have any other goals you set yourself that you want to try to accomplish in the industry? Yeah, so I just recently did a show, a reality show called uh, Love and Translation on TLC. And this is my first American television. So I've done a lot in Canada. I've done a lot of shows. I've done mm -hmm. it all. And so now I'm tapping into the American market. And it's also teaching me to now live my passion to the fullest. And that means creating my own content. Um, you know, it's all nerve wracking. It's risky. But I think this all happened for a reason because it's always been behind back of my head. Right. And it's like, how, when, when is it the right time? And I think this is it. I think this is the right time. This I'm going to call this year, my learning year okay. and try to develop. And it's a scary place to be. It's almost like being an entrepreneur, uh, but I'm taking every step uh, at a time, talking to people, learning from all the experts. I'm lucky to have access to so many great people and really figuring it out. But, you know, I think that's what I kind of manifested is to do something that belongs to me. And maybe this is it. Mm -hmm. How were you approached for for this series? How was my approach for Love and Translation? Yeah, how how were you? Was it like an audition, or did you get a call? Have you worked with somebody before? They said, "Hey, we have this great idea for the show. We want you on." How did that happen? Uh, so someone recommended me to Sharp Entertainment, who was creating the show. And it was one of those calls I had on Zoom. And I think I just washed my hair and I was in a towel. And there was like 12 people on this call. And they knew everything about me. And 
it was so fascinating to hear how they saw me as the host of the show. So they already decided that they wanted me to do this. Okay. And when they told me about the experiment, that's the social experiment, I was like, this is perfect because I love as, as an engineer, you want to see things succeed. And this was it, mm. this social experiment. I wanted to see if it actually works. And I thought this is going to be fun. This is something I haven't done yet. And that's the other thing, uh, Elias, is I love to try new things. So this was great for me to get into. Um, and that's how it started. And then a few months after, I was in Las Arenas in Dominican Republic shooting the show for three and a half weeks during COVID. And it was just a blast. How was this show described to you at first? Because it's a unique yeah, concept that's, to this that's show. That's a really good question because I'm like, I don't fully get it. Like, I, what what is actually going to happen? And then when they said that they're going to have translators, that's when I finally said, this makes sense. Like, okay, so they can't communicate with each other, but the women could communicate with each other and I could communicate with them, which is yeah. brilliant, you know? And to, the idea of not having language, can you fall in love? And so the fact is 90% of our communication is nonverbal. Mm. Um, and if you think about that, this show is exactly proving that it is. And so I can't tell you what happens at the end, but right, let's right. just say there is some success. So the fact that this really does resonate just with people in general, like every day when you're walking down the street, how do you communicate? Or when you're, you know, walking in and seeing your partner, is it that touch that makes you say, I love you? You don't have to she say the words and it's fun to see how the guys try to figure out how to communicate with, with them without the translators mm. um american men even canadian men tend to think that if you slow down a word they would understand it i'm like no nope, <laughs> we don't do that it's the same word uh or them dancing or whatever it is but it is fun to watch and the experiments were so much fun to actually see them actually falling in love when it came to eye gazing or you know the touch I, oh oh so all of that, it, it was really cool to be there as the host to watch it unfold. As a host, what do you think was like the biggest challenge with the show and rewards hosting the show also? Yeah, so I think the challenges was, again, for the guys to really thought they were understanding what the girls were yeah. trying to say. And the whole conversation is completely not right. There were there was a moment when one of the girls goes into their room and they thought that she was there to fight with them when really she was just being funny. She thought she was doing a little skit and that doesn't come out until they finally get the translators and they realize, oh my gosh, we completely disowned, not disowned her, but yeah. completely had the wrong idea of her. And so I felt bad that way. And it's like, you know, and it's that miscommunication. That's not the greatest part. Um, as the host and being on that side, again watching them do these experiments and actually fall in love there's a point where there's one person who's gazing into one of the girl's eyes and they start crying and it's like they had this soulful connection happening um and also being the mother of the group where they were able to come to me if they weren't feeling great and having conversations and asking me uh, like how do you have 20 years of uh, marriage like how does that work and so they felt this comfort with me where they can come to me anytime they needed I know you said you can't tell us that much about the season finale that's come up in a few days, but can you tease anything about it? Can I wink? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, I was happy. I was happy with the results. There you go. There you go. So uh, <laughs> I bet you we were off the air too, you know, uh, you know, you post a lot of things on Instagram and everything, uh, your recent health journey, uh, you were diagnosed with uh, thyroid cancer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things about social media and the pow power of social media, there's the negatives and positives, but one of the positives is being able to use your voice. And uh, I built this incredible community on my social page, which has been um, uplifting uh, for me, in the, especially in the last eight months since I've been dealing with this um, cancer scare. So I am still going through it. And uh, got the cancer out, unfortunately, it leaked into my blood vessels which means I have to do another surgery and then radiation after. Um, but I've learned a lot through this process because I didn't know this existed, this type of cancer that I got. It was a rare type of thyroid cancer. And I talked about the surgery and now I'm working with the hospital to get more funding so women can get this type of surgery where you don't get a scar. 
a lot of people didn't know about it. So using my voice, talking about my experience has led me to create more education, which has been uh, pretty incredible. And that's kind of what kept, keeps me going, right? Mm -hmm. I can't fall into that space where it's that negative space. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have cancer. Rather than that, it's more like, how can I help with my story? So yeah, I'm still going through it, but I'm feeling fantastic. Mm -hmm. How do you also, how do you like motivate yourself also to try like, to not think about it while you're going through this? Yeah, so I, I work out. Okay. <laughs> There's, I am, I love weightlifting. I've been doing it for almost 13 years consistently. And that space really takes me to a positive energy. I don't know what it is about lifting that just gets me just so focused on that. And yeah. so if I'm on the bed and I'm sleeping, I just don't want to get out. I, I tell myself, just get yourself to the gym. You're going to feel mm -hmm. so much better. And sometimes I live that moment. If it means me crying and taking a moment and living it, I'll do that. And then I tell myself, wash, wash that energy away, get up and start feeling the better, better side of yourself. And so that's what kind of what I train myself to do. And no, I do have those moments where I just don't want to, you know, be there and just yeah. like, um, but then I know I have all these other options and being a mother of two daughters that motivates you more than anything else. Isn't it great how kids can motivate you? I have two kids ah. myself, but it's like, if it wasn't yeah. for them, I don't, I wouldn't know what to do. I would feel lost, to yeah. be honest. How old are your how old are your kids? I have a daughter that's nine and my son is six. Oh, yeah. you're in the fun phase. I'm in the yeah. 17 and 14 age. And yeah. uh, let's talk about boys and driving <laughs> and uh, you know, leaving the house and it's it's but it's fun. But you're yeah, yeah you live your life for your kids. That's right. And now with this working out and everything, is this how you started that whole hashtag fitness Tuesday? <laughs> Yeah, so it was, I think it started like 10 years ago. And every wow. Tuesday, you will get a fitness video from me. It was actually someone who said to me, what, what inspires you? What is your motivation? I go fitness. Mm -hmm. And I realized, and especially in the South Asian community, and, and mothers in general, we forget to put ourselves as a priority. And so I took this angle and said, you know what, I'm going to make women realize they are a priority. You are allowed to live your life. You are allowed to be happy. You are allowed to do fitness. And that's what th that's how it all started. And now I do challenges with my husband and people send me all these yeah. weird challenges and I'll start doing that. And it's it's evolved in its in, in its own way. But I love the fact that people use the hashtag fitness to I'm like, we love your fitness to I'm like, okay, it's become a thing now. And it, and it's great. And it really was there to show women that it is possible to have it all. Amazing. I guess you got to do the merch next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to talk to The Rock about that. See how he does there it you all. Go, there <laughs> you go. Uh, last question. Uh, a quote that you live by every day. Is there a certain quote that you live by? Well, I have a mantra. And that mantra okay. is if I talk to someone new every day, I'm going to learn something new every day. So talking to you today, I'm going to learn something new today. And that's where my education comes from. And being in this this job has let me meet so many incredible people around the world. And that's, that's what fuels me. So um, yeah, that's my mantra. And the quote I live by is like, I guess it has to be that someone else's opinion of you is none of my business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have to live life for myself. It's not about what other people think. Again, it's, it has nothing to do with me, how you feel. So I think that's the other one. And that's a hard one, especially with teenage girls who are like, what are you thinking? what are they saying? Um, and I'm trying to instill that in them as well. I mean, that, that's a great tip because even with adults, sometimes, you, you know, there's, there's always noise yeah. in the back, always noise yeah. in the background. That's what I always tell people. Yeah. You just got to yeah, ignore like, it. How, how do you, yeah. For you, like, how do you do that? Like, especially being this business, right? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, and this is like, and I do the podcast thing on the side. I work a full-time yeah. job, but this has been just something I've always loved doing. And when I have time to do it between the kids and everything and the wife yeah. watching the kids, I jump right on and I do a couple of interviews. Good for you, man. That's, 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 that's how you live life. That's there how you do go. it. You, you got to grind away. That's what I tell people. Grind away. We're all uh, grinding. Yeah. It's right, great. Right. Uh, Singita, uh, how can the viewers now find you on social media, keep up with you, with your journey, with the hosting and everything? Oh Lord. I don't even know what my handle is. What is it? <laughs> Sangita Dapa <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it is when I gave you a follow a couple of days ago. Yeah. So follow me about Sangita Dot Patel. And I think it's Sangita underscore Patel on X. And this is Sangita Patel on TikTok. I don't know what my YouTube page is, there but you hopefully if you could just Google me, you'll find me. Amazing. I want to thank you uh, for giving me a few minutes. Good luck with everything. And let's thank get you man. back on with the next project. Sounds good. Thank Amazing. you so much for having me.